ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, students, uh, on behalf of the Deputy Director of UN ECLAC here in the Port of Spain office, we are happy to have been invited to these proceedings and we congratulate the, organ the organizers and wish them a successful meeting. This presentation comes out of a body of research that we are conducting at the UN ECLAC, and um, it's still in its early stages. But I think there are a couple of messages which I want to leave, given the time that is available, 10 minutes. Uh, the first is that many of the countries of the Caribbean are running into serious problems, both with respect to the external sector, that is the current account of the balance of payments, and the fiscal side. And I want to argue that the interpretation of this, these deficits in some quarters is seen as a fiscal issue, and the response is fiscal consolidation. I want to argue that it's a balance of payments issue which is driving the fiscal difficulties. And if you interpret it that way, a series of, a different series of conclusions emerge relative to if you interpret it as a purely a fiscal issue. And so this paper is called Fiscal Consolidation with Medium Term Growth in the Caribbean, with emphasis on both aspects. I'm going to uh, begin with, briefly with some conceptual issues. I'm going to look at the impact of the crisis, um, which is an update of uh, what the principal pointed out this morning in terms of the cost to Caribbean countries. But I want to focus on the impact by pointing out that those countries that suffered most were, were ill-prepared for the crisis. I look at the external sector, the balance of payments, uh, with some care, and then I end with growth prospects and the way forward. I'm not going to dwell too much on the theoretical underpinnings of the relationship between the fiscal balance and the current account deficit. Suffice it to say that when one examines the data on the Caribbean with some care, those two deficits are not only large but growing. And there are several explanations as to why this is so. Some explanations argue that the fiscal deficit actually drives the current account deficit. This is the so-called Mondel Fleming approach. There are other views that suggest that there is no relationship between them. As I argued a little earlier, I will posit that causation runs from the current account deficit to fiscal deficit. And this is important because the, 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 the search for foreign exchange is a very important constraint in small open economies like the Caribbean. Not only the issue of uh, labor productivity, which is also a matter of considerable concern, but the shortage of foreign exchange and the efficiency of its use is also important. So the current account on the balance of payments becomes extremely important. I argue that this deterioration which we have observed, and we will show you in a few uh, in graphs a little later, um, came about through several things. One, the reorientation of trade rules on the, the, the WTO, which um, Professor Bourne talks about, which made many of our industries uncompetitive. Um, the, the removal of preferences, and of course, lower foreign exchange inflows, um, plus weak private sector response. 
as a result of these changes. I want to turn quickly to the cost of the crisis. Uh, we have updated our last estimate, which was some 10% of GDP. Um, we have updated it, and we now find that it was 13.2% of GDP in, 30, in 2009. This is a summary impact which includes the loss to output, the loss to tax revenue, the loss to foreign exchange, the summary impact, 13.2%. But the impact was uneven across jurisdictions. So we notice, for example, that Trinidad and Tobago experienced the largest loss of 26.9%, uh, followed by Antigua and Barbuda, and so on. Um, some jurisdictions actually did well. Um, Guyana, in terms of GDP growth, um, actually experienced positive output. Um, this was due to rising commodity prices, gold, sugar, which, in which world prices were even higher than the EU prices, and so on. Um, but you could see, in terms of GDP, that the service producers suffered most. And so, in, in interpreting the information in the Caribbean, it's very important to separate out the service producers from countries like Guyana, Belize, Suriname, and um, Trinidad and Tobago. Now, the countries, uh, several countries attempted some kind of fiscal stimulus. But of course, because of the, for reasons I've give, given you before, where the fiscal space was extremely tight, many of these programs were very limited. Um, there were waivers and import duties and so on. And for countries for whom uh, taxes on the external side were, was extremely high, um, in terms of the revenue generated from the external side was very high, they had massive revenue losses as a consequence of the fiscal incentives. Now, I argue that the, in response to this uh, crisis, some countries uh, attempted fiscal stimuli. Others did not. Others responded by improving revenue. Um, uh, trying to raise additional revenue. And in the case of Jamaica, there was uh, concern with imposing fiscal rules. Uh, it, in other words, the presumption that this was all the consequence of uh, fiscal profligacy, overspending by the government. I argue that that is a dangerous interpretation that if the crisis is driven by the current account deficit, then what happens is the government attempts to compensate by increasing expenditures, which worsens the fiscal deficit. And I argue that if that is the interpretation, then you have to fix up problems on the external side. In, all, in this analysis, one must be very careful in terms of differentiating Trinidad and, in, to some extent, Guyana, because Trinidad experienced fiscal uh, surpluses until two years ago, of course, with the decline in petroleum and generally hydrocarbon prices, they suffered some losses. Now, here is um, a graph showing the current account deficit. And I separate out Trinidad from the rest of the Caribbean. So this is Trinidad and Tobago. Notice after 2006, there's a dramatic precipitous decline in the surpluses. Um, notice for the rest of the Caribbean, though, there is a general um, deterioration, especially after 2004. What you see after 2008, 2009 is an attempt to adjust and that adjustment was severe because two things happened. There was a reduction in exports, and there was an even greater reduction in imports. 
so that you have a balance but at a lower level of output. I also show graphically the current account deficit for the Caribbean here, the red line. I show it for Trinidad, so I've repeated the graph, but I'm also looking at the overall balance. This is on the fiscal side, and I'm looking at the primary balance. This is on the fiscal side. And you notice that there seem to be some correlation between the current account balance on the external side and the fiscal balance and the overall balance. Now, economists are very wary of correlations. They argue that it's not causation. So what we decided to do was to do some pre preliminary econometric work on causation. And we find, and this is very preliminary, that uh, there is causation from the side of the current account deficit to the overall balance on the fiscal side. And we find no reverse causation between the 